Thanks to give us a review. Uh, okay, so from chapter one, uh, the title was basically You'll Be a Witness. And to finish it, it's A Witness of Christ, sorry, to all the world. So when I was going back to chapter one today, uh, we see Jesus as like, um, we see Luke, who's the author of this book of Acts, reporting to the Ophelas about Jesus. And in this is where we see Jesus appearing to the disciples and talking to them about the kingdom of God. And this is, was 40 days after his crucifixion. And Jesus was just talking to the disciples about the things of the kingdom of God. And from our previous Bible study, Bible studies, I mean, we were able to reaffirm to ourselves that we are the witnesses of Jesus Christ who will tell people about him in Jerusalem, through Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that is in reference to Acts chapter 8. And that is after we receive power. Sorry. Uh, after we receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon us. This is how we are able to become the witnesses of Christ. And that was a promise that Jesus gave to the disciples before he ascended into heaven. And after Jesus had descended into heaven, we see the disciples remaining together and praying together. And I remember from our chapter one of Acts, there was one question that was asking, why was it important for them to be together? And as we discussed, we saw the purpose of the disciples remaining together was to pray and fellowship together which is very evident even in today's Christian life, where believers meet together, worship together, and pray together. And this is from Acts 1.14. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. So basically from chapter one, we see about we ourselves, because the word was written, but it was written for the believers who, are, who, who we ourselves are the ones who are the believers of these times and who are living now. So when we discussed, the main aim was to understand and see the promise of Jesus, of us receiving the power of the Holy Spirit and being the witnesses of Christ to, and sharing the good news of the gospel to all the world. And in chapter two, this is a fulfill, fulfillment of this, of the chapter one, where from my Bible, New Living Translation, the title there is the Holy Spirit comes. And as we saw, like Jesus told the disciples, I will send a helper who will be you, who is the Holy Spirit. And once he comes upon you, you will receive power. And so from chapter two, uh, I'll read from verse 1 to 4. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So the fulfillment comes in verse four, where and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. So meaning we see the disciples receiving power that, as Jesus had promised them because the Holy Spirit had befallen them. And we also see the Jews were completely amazed because they couldn't understand how People from Galilee, Galileans could speak the Jewish language. It's like us who are living here in Korea and China. So it's like when the Chinese or the Korean people see a foreigner speaking Korean or Chinese, they really wonder and they are amazed. How can a foreigner be speaking in their own tongue? Like they're able to understand what you're talking to them. So, and in this 
chapter we continued and we saw uh, Peter who was one of the apostles stood and started speaking to the crowd and in his message he was speaking about about what God says about the last days and we find this from verse 17 to 28 about in the last days God says I will pour out my spirit upon all people your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will see dreams. In those days, I'll pour my spirit, even one of my servants, men and women alike, and they'll prophesy. These are some of the things that Peter spoke about. And we also had a question about the reassurance that Peter was giving in his message last time. And we found things like, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And, and we also saw things like, no, no wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises, my body rests in his hope. So basically, as we saw from chapter two, it was about the Holy Spirit befalling on the disciples and the message that Peter gave to these people who were amazed to what the Jews. Yeah. Maybe someone can top up in case I forgot something. We have one one minute to add to what she has just said. Yeah, it has been uh, very edifying to listen to Grace as she gives us a recap, uh, especially to from chapter one of Acts, and uh, he, she has as well uh, went on ahead to give us a recap in Acts uh, chapter number two. Uh, she has uh, refreshed my mind and uh, reminded us of the core aspect of application, especially from chapter one, that we have been empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have received that power, power to do what? Power to do evangelism, to become the witnesses of the gospel of Christ. That has been very, very uh, powerful for me and uh, very edifying, especially in uh, this time when we see that the church has become so reluctant in sharing the gospel. Uh, the gospel is not received with that much zeal at, as it used to be received in the early church. So this is a a very timely application for all of us that we indeed need uh, to come back to these basics of desiring to be filled of the Holy Spirit so as we may have that zeal of evangelism to become faithful witnesses of the gospel of Christ. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us welcome our brother Titus. Take over. Okay, thank you, Irene. Uh, thank you for everyone who has joined us. Uh, we are going now to proceed on with our study for today. So, uh, we are going first to, I hope you are able to see the, the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't see it for me. You're not able to, to read? Not yet. No. Oh. Let me see what next up. Now? Yes. Okay. So uh, I would like us to, to go again through this passage. And, uh, we read together. There is power in uh, reading the scripture. So we are going to read uh, 
from the same version, all of us, the ESV version. And I would like us to start today from verse number uh, 14. Verse 14. And uh, we are four of us, so at least we can alternate. Uh, we start from um, uh, this order. Irene, you start reading. Uh, you read two verses, and then Grace, two verses, then Nan, two verses, and then I'll read two verses. So we can start from Irene. Okay. Yeah. Let's read Peter's sermon at Pentecostal 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. 15. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I'll pour out my spirit on flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. None. Nan, are you together with us? Sorry. Yeah, read verse 18. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh -huh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 18. Even, um, uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh -huh. uh, verse 18. Uh, even on my male servants and the female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit and the shall prophecy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and sands on the earth below, blood and fear and the vapor of smoke. Mm -hmm, thank you. Verse 20, the sun shall be turned to, to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Irene. 22, men of Israel hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, <coughs> A man attest, attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did is through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God you crucified and killed by hands of the lowest lawless men. God raised him up, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to his and let your holy one see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. 
being therefore a prophet and knowing that God ha- had known with an oath to him that he would sit on his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of, of Christ, that he was not abandoned to hell, no did it did his fresh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend and ascend to into the heavens, but he himself sees the Lord said to my Lord, uh, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for, the, for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children. And for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord, our Lord God, calls to himself. And with with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exalt them, saying, save yourselves from this wicked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the abstruse teaching and the fellowship and to and to the to the breaking of bread and the prayers and the, and the, um, came upon every soul and uh, many wonders and the sons uh, were being done through the abstruse. Forty-four, and all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. Amen. 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 Yes. So uh, thank you for the wonderful reading. I hope so far you are blessed by the reading. So we are going now to uh, go back to our guide. As uh, we have seen last time, we covered the the first part about uh, the receiving power. We we looked at how the disciples started uh, speaking in tongues and how they responded towards uh, this. And now we are going to start from question number six. Did we cover question number six? Yeah, I think we cover number six. Even seven. Even seven, yeah. Today we are starting eight. Yeah. Yes, Yes, we are on eight. Yeah, okay. So let's look at question number eight. What does Peter have to offer to those who are responsive to his message? Mm Anyone feel free to 
respond, what does Peter have to offer to those who are responsive to his message? Verse 37 to 39. Uh, Peter, Peter told them to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for them to be forgiven for their sins. Yes, correct. Yeah. Verse 38 clearly states, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Verse, question number nine. How have you how have your life and ministry been affected by the gift of the Holy Spirit? So this is a very important question whereby we need to now look at our own Christian life. How have we seen how the Holy Spirit it has been active in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities? or especially in our Christian work, how has the Holy Spirit been active? Amen. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> for me, the Holy Spirit has been active over my life because it's the one which always reminds me to stay away from temptations and sins. Mm -hmm. Also, if uh, I, I'm t um, discussing the word of God to someone, mm -hmm. I see the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit working on that person, not just my words. Because if I try to do it alone, it cannot work. But... Mm -hmm. If I allow the Holy Spirit to use me, it works. Amen. I like the aspect Irene you shared about uh, the Holy Spirit uh, enables you, especially in your person to person evangelism. When you share God's word with your friends, uh, the word comes forth with heavy. A heaviness and it convicts the people that you are talking to. That shows the, the power of the Holy Spirit, how it's active in your own personal life. And also you talked about how the Holy Spirit uh, enables you to keep away from sin. Uh, that's very good. Anyone else would like to share with us? None. Mm, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give me one minute. Okay. I think. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe as uh, others are thinking, mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say uh, this is a very crucial question. It's, it's kind of uh, looks simple. But it's a question that all of us, we need to always uh, focus and uh, always remember. Because uh, we find right from Acts chapter number two, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. Remember, right from the beginning in the Bible, from Genesis, and the Holy Spirit has been there. But now in Acts chapter number two, we find the Holy Spirit upon each and every disciple who was gathered in the upper room. And so the crucial question we need to ask ourselves, how is the Holy Spirit uh, now relevant to the church today, right after the day of Pentecost? And 
to some extent, some believers, uh, they think the Holy Spirit presence is only by the dramatic, uh, maybe aspects that you start shaking or you start seeing some other weird uh, scenes. That is when you will know that the Holy Spirit is active. But actually, even now as we are talking, the Holy Spirit is active and working through us. So one of the ways that I can fully share that I have seen the Holy Spirit ministry in my own life is especially in the life of prayer. Actually, I wouldn't, uh, 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 it's quite difficult to pray, but through the Holy Spirit, he's able to, he, he's able to give us that ability to communicate with God and to have that assurance that our prayers are so precious before the, uh, God the Father. Number two, uh, as Irene also mentioned, when it comes to our sermon, you may find that when you preach the gospel, when you have the full power of the Holy Spirit, it will have an effect, it will have an impact to the people that you are speaking to. And when they listen, they will have that conviction in their hearts that this is not your word you are sharing. You are sharing God's message to them. And from that, you find transformation. And also in my journey of faith, my own character, I've seen the power of the Holy Spirit uh, helping me towards that journey of transformation. Each day becoming like Christ, defeating sin and conquering the power of the flesh. This has always been through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number four, I would say reading the scriptures. Sometimes uh, reading the scriptures can be very boring and understanding some concepts, it can be very challenging. But through the Holy Spirit, I'm able to read the scriptures, understand my eyes are opened. And within myself, I feel a burning in my heart about the word of God, what is the Bible saying to me at a specific season and time. So it has been a great journey to have the Holy Spirit, we uh, in our generation today and in my own personal work with the Lord. Amen. In my uh, ministry in China, mm -hmm. mm, at that time, I think I just uh, uh, believe in Jesus for one of, of two years, and that's uh, my leader asked me to uh, to serve the church. Mm. But I didn't have any experience at that time. And uh, uh, I'm also very weak. Uh, but uh, uh, but the Holy Spirit uh, led me uh, to many things <laughs> and give me a visitor. But at that time, I, uh, I, I didn't realize that my like, uh, oh, how do, I don't know how to say, how to organize. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, especially when I uh, individualized, individualized in the campus, mm -hmm. in the universe, in the universities, mm -hmm. um, every time uh, uh, God gave me uh, the wisdom mm -hmm. and gave me the power mm -hmm. to talk about uh, Jesus mm -hmm. uh, to different people in different ways, mm -hmm. 
and uh, after light, uh, I feel very happy. So I, uh, I, I, I know, I know it's a work of Holy Spirit. Uh, even uh, although at that time I, I thought I, I was really foolish <laughs> and uh, lack of uh, experience and uh, mm -hmm. uh, didn't know the whole uh, whole Bible very well. Mm -hmm. uh, but God used me at that time mm -hmm. and uh, he did many works uh, so, sorry, <laughs> that's Amen. all. Yeah, we <laughs> understand. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Nan. Amen. Anyone else who would like to share with us? Yeah, I would like also to highlight uh, the role of the Holy Spirit, especially in the journey of sanctifying us. How the Holy Spirit uh, help, help us in our weak areas. There is a scripture uh, in the book of Romans, chapter number eight. Paul writes to the Romans and says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. So initially, I had this mindset that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, cannot be associated or uh, just uh, cannot be associated with any kind of uh, weakness. But I came to know that the Holy Spirit is there as our helper to help us overcome sin, to help us overcome the weak areas within ourselves. So the Holy Spirit doesn't need in a perfect person. It needs that person who is weak so as he can come and dwell in that person and make them strong. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Grace, you have something else? No, no, I think all has been said. Okay. Question number nine. Grace, you can read for us question number nine. 10. Describe the fellowship of the believers in this young in this young church, including their priorities. Aha, very good. Describe the fellowship of the believers in this young church, including their priorities. That is verse 42 and verse 47. Maybe let me read. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowships, to the breaking of bread and the prayer. And all came upon every soul. And, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling all their possessions and belongings and distributing to the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. So what... Describe the fellowship of the believers. How do you find this fellowship? And the, their priorities. What did they focus on as first? What did they put first? Me, uh, I would describe... I would describe it by using the verse 46 to 47. Like they continue to meet together in the temple. They broke the bread in their homes and eat together with uh, 
glad and sincere hearts, mm -hmm. praising God and enjoying all the favor to all the people, and the Lord added to their number <clears throat> daily those who were being saved. Mm -hmm. That's how I can describe mm -hmm. the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. But for me, I can describe it as a devoted fellowship. Mm -hmm. But it says all the believers devoted themselves. So uh, the devotion and then also they include about sharing a meal. And this one, Jesus demonstrated it himself during the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. where They were sharing the meals. Mm -hmm. And then... They, it's a fellowship that had the call that the Lord has called us to do, which is to worship Him. And says they worship together at the temple each day, and also praising God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Which version are you reading? I, I it's interesting. Which version? <laughs> New Living Translation. Which verse? It says they were worshiping together. Verse forty-six, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They worship together at the temple each day. 46. Can you read 46, your version? They worship together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. Mm, okay. ESV says, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. So your version doesn't have breaking bread. It talks about worship. No, the, it talks about met in homes for the Lord's Supper. Okay, okay. And shared their meals with, yeah. I think the meals and the other part about breaking okay. bread, the same okay. thing. Okay, okay, I like that. Well, uh, I think we have seen very key aspects, the priorities. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, I note, uh, they, they met at home. They didn't meet in... Uh, the cathedrals or big churches or church buildings that we used to we are used to in our time today they they <laughs> met at home and also i see the aspect of generosity uh, this was a church that was sharing all they had and belonging they it was a generous church they 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 had not uh, that self centeredness that we have in our Modern day, modern day church. They used to distribute and share everything they had in common. And uh, they also uh, practiced the Lord's Supper. They, uh, they devoted themselves to the teachings also and the breaking of bread and prayers. Uh, and I like uh, uh, Grace mentioned about verse 42 and they devoted themselves. I want to ask Grace, what, what does it mean to devote? You mentioned about devoting. How can you explain further? What does it mean to devote? I think in a simple way is like, uh, let's say like an example on Sundays, mm -hmm. uh, some Christians devote themselves to go to the church and mm -hmm. others, usually the parents are supposed or they are going there because uh, maybe to be seen, but someone who has devoted themselves, mm -hmm. they are willing and ready to learn the word. Right? I need to fast sometimes simple English words, but the meaning is. <laughs> Wait. Sure, somebody else. Thank you. <laughs> I think the best word I can use that comes easily in my mind, a synonym of devotion, it's about commitment. Yeah, commitment. Yeah, they committed themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship. They had that uh, uh, level of commitment that they have to fulfill some, some duties. Uh -huh. Somebody else? Okay, then we can proceed on. Uh, question number 12. 11. 11. Okay. 
what do you think it would be like for the Lord to add daily to the numbers of your Christian community, those who are being saved? What do you think it would be like for the Lord to add daily to the numbers of your Christian community, those who are being saved? Okay, in other words, mm. uh, what it means, how, when have you experienced true fellowship in your own uh, context? It's, it's nice. <clears throat> To me, it's like we are on earth, but we are also in heaven. Mm -hmm. I feel like oh, I don't want that fellowship to end. I feel like we can stay there and forget about everything. Mm -hmm. So Irene, put it in the context of uh, now we are having the challenge of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So uh, how have you still maintained that Christian community that we have seen in the early church? Uh, the, the believers or the disciples, they committed themselves to prayer. They committed themselves to the breaking of bread. They also went on an extra mile to be generous to share everything they had, it also touched on their pockets. So tell us a more practical aspects that in your own fellowship, wherever you are, you have been able to imitate this model we have seen in the fellowship of the early church. And remember, they used to meet at people's homes. So please try to compare in relation to what we have seen in the early church. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Now, for me, uh, it's like we meet in people's homes because we, we meet in our own rooms. So <laughs> it's like home, you know? Wow. Uh, and I can't say that we have everything that they used to do, but we are looking forward, they are still growing. We share the word of God mm -hmm. like they used to and we gather. Do you share any meal? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because um, we have this, this habit of Bible quiz mm -hmm. and if if you win that Bible quiz, you get something, and it's something to eat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that's how we share. But also sometimes we we just have a fellowship of eating, just eating, nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. interesting. And uh... but. Uh, uh -huh. Also, uh, a tip about uh, this coronavirus and what uh, I think we can add more energy in reading the word of God and living according to that word that we read. Mm -hmm. Not just reading and know, know it and do it. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to adapt to the situation. If it's not possible for me to meet Titus, but I have a phone, I can call him video call. We pray together. But we don't find I him. I can video send call him a message. In the <laughs> yeah, but that is early church. Uh -huh. Now situations has changed. So, uh -huh. but the one of God has not changed. Remember. Yeah, the word of God has not changed. But also there is the situation that we are in. Mm -hmm. I believe even God can see. And he also <laughs> allowed this platform to be there for us to use it. Mm -hmm. 
That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Thank you for sharing your your uh, your idea. It's interesting. Uh, anybody else? Okay, maybe as others uh, still are thinking about how true fellowship is experienced in our modern day church. I would say this is a very, very good question, especially for us to think about, especially in the time that we are living in. I think uh, right from the time COVID-19 came, what has been hit hard is the value of fellowship. Hmm. And uh, you find that most believers, uh, actually yesterday, my pastor was sharing with me of how the church has declined in the number of people who attend since corona, uh, corona, corona virus came up. So it has discouraged many believers and many believers have lost the value of fellowship of togetherness of people coming together. Now, from this passage, we need to clearly understand what the Bible is speaking to us. And if you look clearly, the disciples, they didn't take fellowship on a light note. They took the power of fellowship with a lot of seriousness. And to show that, look at the wording the Bible uses in verse 42. It says, they devoted themselves. That shows there was a sense of urgency, a sense of, of commitment in the, in the aspect of, of meeting together. And you can see the impact it had. Verse 47, it says, and daily they were added to their number. Now, one aspect also that we, we, uh, Irene has, has mentioned about the, the modern time whereby we have seen an improvement in the ways in which we can connect and relate towards each other. And we have seen like now we are able to fellowship uh, through uh, Zoom virtually. But this is uh, not uh, an excuse for us when the opportunity of meeting physically, we fail to meet. But as well, it's another upgraded way as well which we can be able to fellowship. But still, we should not neglect the other aspect of meeting physically and being able to fellowship together. There is something I've been thinking about. What has killed the power of fellowship in the church today is the aspect of people not being honest and sincere believers. I will share with you just part of my own experience. Uh, I remember we used to have a home cell fellowship and in that home cell fellowship, people used to meet at their respective homes. So I remember it reached to a point uh, when some members felt uncomfortable to host a cell, a home cell at their homes on the, on the basis that they felt maybe they don't have very good furniture to host the, the, the home cell. And uh, later, after some time, the fellowship died. People would not meet anymore just on the basis some felt inferior when they visit certain home, they are, they are hosted with, uh, with uh, burgers, with uh, sausages, but in some homes, even the, the people are just given tea or water. So some felt inferior and they felt, oh, this home cell, it's not all that uh, uh, comfortable. They felt it's, it's not all that uh, suitable for them. So eventually the power of fellowship ended up like that. But now this is the point I want to draw home. From the early church, what we need to see, the believers, they didn't wear any mask on their way of relating together. 
they were open to each other. They were honest. And one of the things that you need to understand, verse 46, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. That aspect of the Bible pointing out generous heart. So it means somebody can be generous, but not from the heart. So they were having that sense of sincerity in the way they related. They didn't wear masks on each other. And this is something I'm really praying God to help me and help the church and my fellowship that we shall be able to relate with a sincere heart. We know it's not about competition. It's not about strife. We are not comparing. We just relate as human beings, as people who have been created by God in his image. So that is uh, the key aspect of which we need to cultivate and be praying for, especially when we are thinking about true fellowship amongst, our, uh, amongst uh, ourselves and even in the church. Chris, you have something to share or none? Feel free, please. Or how have you experienced true fellowship in grace? Mm -hmm. In Korea sometimes. <laughs> yeah, give us uh, more details how it, it is. And maybe areas that you think we are failing. No, for me in Korea, I think it's uh, not very well, but I think that kind of relates to verse 13. Mm -hmm. Uh, not verse okay. 13, two question <laughs> question that it's about how does your church or Christian community or you personally need to change in order to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, like about the fellowship, sometimes I feel like the culture shock or the cultural differences are way too many sometimes, especially in, in worship. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, but that one is it an aspect to to make mm. us not fellowship? No, no, no. It should not. It's <laughs> okay. Maybe you need to change. Yeah, yeah. I need to change. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, any more? Uh... Mm. Uh, actually. Uh, before, uh, before this, uh, today tonight's tonight's uh, Bible study, I <laughs> I went to my mom's my my leader's house, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this afternoon, and uh, uh, to do <laughs> the housework mm -hmm. with her and her sister together and. Uh, after that, we uh, enjoy our dinner together. And after that, <laughs> do the housework <laughs> again. <laughs> and then wash the dishes and uh, uh, to prepare, wash and prepare for the, uh, what? To, to do, to make the kimchi. Mm -hmm. Money, money. <laughs> so I came back. Uh, came back uh, about uh, 20 minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> before the Bible study. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I couldn't understand uh, uh, my leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, uh, leading us, or training us. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I think it's a waste of time. Uh, uh, because I have more, I had more important <laughs> to do, important thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for example, study how to uh, write in the report. <laughs> but uh, uh, many times the Holy Spirit made me mm -hmm. understand. Uh, God's heart 
and uh, my leader's heart. And uh, uh, so I, now I'm most, I'm very thankful. And I learned uh, a lot from uh, my leader's uh, leadership. <laughs> And uh, he trained uh, the workers for the church, mm -hmm. um, not uh, by some special <laughs> ways, just uh, every day he, she uh, have a comment. Um, and she pay, paid attention to our morning prayer mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and our worship, um, uh, worship and uh, prayer meetings, and uh, all kinds of studies in the church. Uh, for my study in Chongqing, it's also important, but uh, uh, from Saturday to Monday, I uh, I had no time for myself to uh, to study or to write in the reports. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I learned a lot uh, from uh, the uh, life with my leader. Mm -hmm. uh, I served her yeah. and I learned how to serve others. Mm -hmm and uh, how to love uh, others and uh, to uh, to see others needs mm -hmm. and uh, <coughs> i think i saw the the fellowship uh just like uh, in the in the in the acts chapter two mm -hmm. uh I, I don't know <laughs> yeah, if yeah. I expressed my idea clearly. <laughs> yeah, it's clear. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's very good, very good. I think uh, in my church, uh, in in Pusa and uh, in especially in the churches in China, mm -hmm. uh, belong to one community mm -hmm. and. Uh, Every church about uh, twenty to thirty mm -hmm. students mm -hmm. or other members, and uh, we after the worship we will share uh, the food together, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we have a very close relationship. Mm -hmm. Even almost every day after the school, we the church is near the near the colleges mm -hmm. and after uh, af after the classes the mm -hmm. students we will invite the student to eat together with us mm -hmm. and after that do the housework mm -hmm. and then they come came back to a school I came back to the the college mm -hmm. and uh, if they had no class classes at that time we will uh, call the uh, called them and invited them to go out with us together mm -hmm. to evangelize in the campus. Uh, mm -hmm. We prayed together and then evangelize. Mm -hmm. After after that, we will come back together to the church and then prepare the dinner. After that, uh, do the housework and then uh, to prayer together, have a prayer meeting together. Uh, every day, almost every day, like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like uh, the community <laughs> in the Acts two, chapter two. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nan, for Amen. sharing. Yeah, I think we have uh, answered question twelve and thirteen. I think now we shall mm -hmm. conclude. Will, before we conclude, or maybe I give back to Irene. I've been really challenged about uh, the power of fellowship. And as Nana was talking, uh, something uh, came into my mind. 
about a statement that how in a fellowship you can be able to know how much we are weak. It's in a fellowship we are able to know how we need to love. It's in a fellowship we can learn how we need to share. It's in a fellowship we can learn how to pray. It's in a small group that we can learn how to. So many things as now we are in a small group. So fellowship is very key for our Christian growth and even towards our maturity as believers. Thank you. So as a prayer request, ask God to make the power of the Holy Spirit come alive in us and pray that he will use us through that power and ask him to add to your community those who are being saved. We need to see people coming to the Lord. So Irene will lead us into uh, prayer and then uh, conclude. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, this, this today's Bible study is very challenging for me. The last two questions, we still have a lot to do. And I believe if, if we have a true fellowship, we won't be having problems of people who are depressed, people who feel lonely, true. people who reach a level of committing suicide. We won't have people who feel like I'm poor, I'm on this level and this Amen. person is on this level. Yeah. We need to pray and also put it into practice. Amen. Um, yeah. Let's pray. Also, let us pray for those who were not able to join us today because today we are very few. Let's pray for them. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for today. I bless your name for this fellowship. We pray that your Holy Spirit continue to guide us. We pray that, Lord, give us the power. Let your power, let the Holy Spirit be active in us so that we will be true, true witness of of your love, Abba Father. I pray that you continue to build our fellowships. I pray that you give us everlasting love as you loved us, O oh God. I pray that you help us overcome our fears. I pray that you continue to give us wisdom because these days are not easy. I pray that, O oh God, you give us wisdom to for us to know how to live in these days. It's mm -hmm. not easy. There are many temptations. There are many stuff that are pulling us, but I pray that your wisdom, that the power of the Holy Spirit will continue to guide us. Yes. I pray that our Father will be true witness for you. And I pray that we will be vessels and will be important vessels in your in your house, oh God, I pray that you use us to get more Christians. The verse that we read today, it said that because they were committed, oh Lord, they were growing day by day. Yes, Lord. I pray that yes. you also make us committed. Give us the commitment so that everyone around this world, oh God, will get to know about you because that's, that's the... That is the work that you left for us. You said we should go and make disciples. We pray that you give us the strength and the power as we depart, oh God. I pray that the Holy Spirit continue to talk to us, discuss with us in our hearts this uh, word that we share. And I pray that for those who we are challenged, I pray that you help us do what what our hearts are telling us to do, what the word is saying that we should do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 So thank you, everyone.
One and. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm.